What's going on everybody? It's been a while since I've unboxed any new hardware, shown off any new components, but today we're going to be building a new computer. Now, it's going to be a fairly significantly powerful computer, but the goal was to make it cost below $800. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the first part I have is the i5-3570K. Price at $220. This is pretty much the all-around standard gaming CPU right nowadays. Next up, we have 8 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR3 at 1600. Came free with the motherboard. Then we have the Antec Earthwatch 650 watt power supply. This was $80. I went with the EVGA GTX 670, which is $375. And the motherboard is the ASRock Z77 Pro 4, which is $105. As you can see, here's a close-up of the board right here. Kind of um, skimped out on the motherboard element, but like I said, we're trying to keep it under 800. And here's a little close-up of the RAM. And right here, for the second time, you can see this GTX 670. Should probably just kept the old one and just use it right here. Save myself the trouble, right? And right here is the i5-3570. Yes, CPUs are very small and tiny if you've never seen one up close. And here's the power supply once again, outside of the box. It is not modular if anybody's asking. Like I said, we were trying to keep it under $800. And the case, as you all know, is the Roswell Challenger. And for the hard drives, we're using twin two 320 gigabyte hard drives. Like I said, we're trying to keep it under 800 so we're using some parts I've had laying around like this Roswell Challenger the two hard drives, the CD drive, and as you can see, it's pretty spacious, not really my ideal case, I mean it's got a top fan, rear fan, front fan, it's got a nice little blue LED at the front, this is what my original case was before I upgraded to my Corsair case. So we're going to start dropping in these hard drives right now, each hard drive is 320 gigs, if my friend wants anything bigger he can go out and buy himself a one terabyte hard drive but like I said we're trying to keep things below 800 so we're using some existing parts and pieces we have lying around next up we're going to put in the power supply and when you're installing a power supply make sure it is seated properly that is the one thing outside the motherboard of course that you definitely want seated properly if it's not seated properly you're going to have I don't know, it's the power. To me, something that big has got to be held down real well. And like always, these things can sometimes be a pain to put in, but like I said, take your time, put it in properly, always make sure you got the job done well. But make sure you got a nice set of tools too, a little red handy dandy screwdrivers, I love those things. So get one, two. And get the third one at the bottom. Struggling a little bit. Tighten the rest of them, make sure. Double check it, make sure it's seated properly. And there's the power supply. Now this motherboard kind of upset me a little bit because it didn't come with any of the screws to mount it onto the case, so I had to actually go out and get some spare ones for that. Now, to put the CPU cooler on, we're not using any aftermarket cooling solutions because even though it's a K, I don't think we're going to be planning on doing any kind of overclocking just yet. I mean, not that you really need to or anything like that. And when you put the CPU cooler on, this is the stock cooler, by the way, that comes with the i5-3570. Make sure you know you click it down the four spaces. Make sure it is clicked in. Otherwise, you might have problems like RevHead. And there goes the RAM. The RAM is nice because it's free. One stick, eight gigabytes. Can't really argue with that. And next up, we have the GPU, the GTX 670, brought to you by EVGA. Fairly expensive card, $375. Make sure you mount this in properly and screw it in the sides and make sure it is seated properly. Next up, PCI. Plug it in, power it on. It's obviously not going to turn on if you don't connect it to the power supply. Like 
And there's pretty much an overview of what we got going right here. Not the neatest wiring job available, but it's sufficient. I'll clean it up later. So lastly, what I always do when I turn it on, as you can see, everything's working. I take one of those little twisty tie things. And I like to stick it into each fan to make sure it's spinning, to make sure it's working, and things of that nature. So I'm going to take a little twisty tie. I'm going to jam it real into the CPU cooler, into the front fan into the GPU's fan now into the rear fan and now into the power supply and everything seems to be working good so this is a new build people enjoy your day take it easy